Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of Fight Night Champion. Let's continue from where we left off right here. Night Fight Studios, we have an update on the career of rising star Andre Bishop. And while he certainly hasn't taken an easy road so far in his career, Bishop is poised to have his coming out party against top 15 middleweight contender Ricardo Alvarez. Something virtually unheard of for a prospect with so few pro fights. What's more, the fight will take place in Alvarez's hometown of Chicago. Although we can't expect a few fans to make the trip from Philly. This story gets really good. What can I do for you, Mr. McQueen? Andre, I have to tell you something about your father. Before he died, he and I agreed to a deal. I was going to get him a title shot and let Gus stay on as his manager. Sadly, he never got a chance to tell Gus about it. I'll give you the same deal. Keep Gus as your trainer and manager. I'll promote your fights. Megan's young. She's got other fighters. And think about your brother. What about my brother? Raymond's got talent. Not your kind of talent, but <laughs> he's big. You see how big he is? He could be heavyweight champ someday. Isaac Frost looks unbeatable now. But who knows? He's smart, Andre. Let me take you and Raymond to the top. Look. Mr. McQueen, I don't appreciate you talking about my father or trying to get me to go behind Gus's back. Stay away from my brother and stay away from me. Are we clear? You have no idea who you're fucking with, kid. Oh, good luck with Alvarez. But I got a feeling it's not going to be your night. Remember what he said there? And so the thing about this, guys, is um, a few of you guys have told me that uh, that DL McQueen is actually apparently based on real-life corrupt boxing promoters. So I actually had no idea about that. And a lot of you guys have told me that, um, uh, that, that boxing is actually more rigged than a lot of people think it is. It's not rigged in the sense that the fights are staged but that the promoters oftentimes will choose the fighters that are f uh, fighting like, you know, champions, and they will choose fighters that they know are going to specifically lose just to keep up a fighter's streak and just ke keep getting more and more money for these, um, uh, for these pay-per-views. And so apparently, uh, D.L. McQueen is based on that. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, everybody. Joe Tessator and Teddy Atlas welcoming you to the Aragon Ballroom here in Chicago, Illinois, for a much anticipated main event. The stage is set. Now the spotlight falls on the unbeaten, right, hot rising prospect Andre Bishop as Let's he takes his first major step up in facing middleweight contender Ricardo Alvarez. Remember, get the move. Takes one, but gives one. Good work by Andre Bishop. I like the way he went up top that time with the hook. Come on, baby. Hook up. Teddy, talk to me about this matchup from a defensive side of the game when you have two speedy fighters matching up. Well, you know what? I'm going to whisper. Oh, I almost guy. had him. He is Whoa. not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. Protecting his head well with his guard. Put your hands up. The other day when we were talking to Andre Bishop, he said to have success in this fight, I have to land combinations. He and remember, we're playing on greatest of all time. Sending shots to the midsection. Targeting that overhand left. Nice block. Oh, almost shot. had him. It was intended to the head. Got him. Bishop's right hand working well that time. He scored well. Nice block. That is boxing 101. A nice, crisp combination by Andre Bishop. Damn. Solid left. Tremendous pace being set early on here between these two. Can't see this fight going the distance with this pace. No, not unless something changes, like moving their heads a little bit. Damn. But if you guys notice, um, 
A lot of times, I attack the body a lot of times when I do fights. And so, body and then try to hook him. Now he places that hook right to the body. That's a good hook by Andre Bishop. And the right... Look at this now. Okay. The judges ain't even watching this fight. I can see it in their eyes. The queen fucked us. We're not winning any decisions tonight. Means you gotta knock this guy on the canvas. Understand? Knock him on his ass. So, basically, uh, McQueen had paid off the judges. The judges basically give you a score each round. So it doesn't matter how many times you hit him, unless you knock him out, you're gonna lose the fight. But is it a fresh fighter? Bishop's corner is hoping so. Based on what we saw at the end of the last round, who knows? Well, his corner should also be hoping that his opponent across the way doesn't come out here like the executioner to get this over with. Because if he does, I think it's over. of this three-minute round. Frustrating his opponent with great defense. And now a well-placed hook to the head. Bishop's combination punching is working well here. There's the hook by Andre Bishop. That was well scored. Good left there. A big hook to the head by Andre Bishop. Very nice work from both men. They each got a shot in. Alvarez can't take more what of this. Impact from that uppercut by Andre Bishop. Yeah. And makes that nice right angle on that hook upstairs. A good hook by Andre Bishop. Bishop's landing a combination here. That's what he does when he's at his very best. And this round comes to an end. Oh, he's bleeding already. Okay. Nice work, kid. Good job in that round. Back to live action now in what has been a closely contested fight. One of those fights that somebody is still waiting to break through and be a difference maker in. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counterpuncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. Solid uppercut. Bishop is stunned. He just took a huge punch. And now he has to grab. He has to get in close and make sure that he kills some time. Good, strong combo. Right back at him with a left hand. Oh, that's a big hook right there. Trying to time that straight left hand, and he does so with ease. That was a left Damn. hand that came raining in on him. Damn. Big, big shot he just scored with. Unable to Alvarez is taking a massive beating. Floor. What will happen now with Andre Bishop as he rises up to fight on after being floored? Now I'm getting him. Come on, King Focus. Yeah, 
Andre Bishop's lack of defense, especially when it comes with just getting away from that right hand, is really costing him a lot here. Well, it's pretty simple. The old timers would say, move your head, otherwise your opponent will move it for you. Oh, and the right hand comes in. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. Oh, he's hurt right there. He is hurt. You know, oh, he's doing a good job of just being patient now. And look I hurt Alvarez, though. Shot. Well, you know, the landscape of this business, the history of this business is littered with guys that they've had someone hurt, they get a little careless, they get caught. He better watch out that he doesn't get put on that landscape. Oh, what a big hook to the head by Andre Bishop. Pulls the trigger right away with the left hand after getting tagged himself. What a nice combo it, by Andre like Bishop. Fires off the hook. Look at that. Good combination. Hook into the body with the left and then going up top with the right. Scored well with the hook. How about that left hand? Oh, a nice two-punch combo by Andre Bishop. Alvarez can't take more of this. No need to be on the inside. Move. Right on the mark with the hook up top. Bishop's fighting a completely different fight right now. He went down earlier, and you can see that he's just throwing that strategy, that original game plan, right in the garbage. Well, it's showing you that he's a thinking man's fighter. He had to make an adjustment. You know, he would have had no chance to survive and to later win this fight if he stayed with the same plan. He had to come up with a little bit of a change. And that's exactly what he's done. Targeting that hook upstairs by Andre Bishop. Really solid left hand by Andre Bishop. That's exactly what his corner wants him to do. Each man able to land an uppercut. And that's the end of round four. I don't want to see you against the rope. A well-targeted hook to the head by Andre Bishop. Bishop's putting forth that hard work he did in training camp there, landing a crisp combination. He got rocked. He just got rocked, and he's still taking punches. The only way right now is to grab on a little. Oh, and there you go. And he beat the count. I don't think so here, Teddy. Now I know where they got I told you guys, yeah, Alvarez wasn't able to take that anymore. Yeah, so the Queen's gonna not gonna be happy about that. Hope I don't get a copyright claim here. The soundtrack is great in this game, but I just please just don't get a copyright claim for this part here now. We were ready to make a move. My future looked bright. Nice place. So gym's closed, fellas. We didn't come here to work out. What's going on? We came to have a little talk. Remember what I said that for a sports game, the story is really good. Thugs. They were cops. Dirty cops on McQueen's payroll. Wrong fucking move, kid. Wrong fucking move. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Kenny, and welcome to Friday Night Fights here on ESPN. Before we get into tonight's action, some shocking news this week involving middleweight prospect and amateur gold medalist Andre Bishop. Reports are coming in that Bishop has been arrested for allegedly carrying an unlicensed firearm and assaulting two police officers. Details remain spotty, but the word is there was an altercation in the late hours of the evening between Bishop and the police at Carisi's Boxing Club, the gym where Bishop trains. The word of two decorated police officers was all it took. My dreams, my freedom, everything was taken from me. Corrupt cops, uh... 
Here's what I'll tell you. Those guys were corrupt cops that were working for McQueen. Corrupt cops are such scumbags that oftentimes they are even worse than a lot of times the the actual gangsters. I mean, corrupt cops technically are gangsters with a badge, but when I say, like, gangsters, you guys know what I'm talking about, like, mafias, gangs, like, a lot of times corrupt cops are even, even worse than the actual gangsters a lot of times, because corrupt cops know the system, they know how the system works, and they are extremely untrustworthy, and if they think that you are no use to them, they're gonna get rid of you. And so that's why corrupt cops are some most da most dangerous people out there. They're really, really, really bad people. These are people that, you know, that swear to take an oath to uphold the law, but instead use that as a position to enrich themselves and take advantage of others. Everybody up! Cell block D, get up! No that's how Andre got in prison. I had to help myself. I couldn't let this place beat me. I did what I had to do. I fought. Those crackers have been talking so much about kicking your ass, they think they can take you one on one. I had to agree to some conditions, though. Bare knuckles. No refs, no rounds. Fight until somebody quits. Or can't get up. I like those conditions. And let's go get it on. Professional boxing shit ain't gonna help you here. You got to knock this motherfucker out. Here's what I'll also tell you guys about um, uh, skinheads in prison. Uh, these guys are most likely Aryan Brotherhood, which is a neo-Nazi gang. And the Aryan Brotherhood is the most known neo-Nazi gang. But anyways, about the Aryan Brotherhood, this is one thing that people don't know about the, the Aryan Brotherhood, is that this gang actually formed in prisons. That's where that, that giant neo-Nazi gang came from. It was created in prisons. So these guys, what I'll say about them, is these guys are some really, really scary um, gangsters. Uh, the Aryan Brotherhood, these guys oftentimes deal in drugs, you know, meth, um, cocaine, heroin, and a lot of these guys are massive meth heads. Uh, they usually um, they usually hang out in impoverished areas, but typically the Aryan Brotherhood don't operate in cities. A lot of times they operate in rural communities. Uh, typically they will also be in trailer parks, and so a lot of these guys are very unstable people. They're massive meth heads. Uh, they're just really, really scary people to be around. They're also, a lot of these guys also, these pretty accurate to what these guys look like. Uh, a lot of times, sh shaved head, tattoos all over themselves. Sometimes they even cut themselves. They got scars all over their face. Uh, these are some really, really bad guys. Oh, damn. See that? That's cheap, that is. Not blocking his body as much. He's going to go down any moment now. Look at 
that. Look at what I just did to him. Destroyed. Look at the left side of his face. Look at what I did to it. Oh, he's still going. Destroyed. Look at that. And this is so satisfying beating the crap out of these scumbags. Remember in the very first part, these are the same guys that jumped Andre in, in uh, the showers. Come on. Absolutely destroyed him. I hear about you signing with D.L. McQueen. <laughs> no way, Adrian. Yo, Mr. McQueen told me Pop was gonna do the same thing. And you believe that? I believe this. <laughs> Yo, Mr. McQueen has done a lot for me. And Dre, I'm gonna be smart. I'm gonna let him keep doing what he's doing. Raymond, you'd be smart to stay away from McQueen, man. I always wanted you I to... ain't you, Dre. I'm me. I'm a heavyweight, Mr. McQueen. Mr. McQueen believes I can be the champ. The champ. I'm going for it, brother. I gotta do what's best for me. How's Gus taking him? I had to let Gus go. Raymond, no! I didn't have no choice, Dre. He fired Gus. Gus can't give me a shot at the title? Mr. McQueen can. Dad realized that too late and I can't make that same mistake. I gotta do what's best for me and not what's best for Gus. So his brother signed up with uh, D.L. McQueen and um, he fired Gus. Gus was um, Andre's... Uh, uh, trainer and also his manager what i'll tell you about uh in the storyline uh gus is basically like a second father to both andre and raymond because after andre and ray uh, and raymond's parents died gus took them in he raised them like his own kids and so that the fact that raymond just fired gus and just signed on with deal mcqueen over the money that's just so disgusting and um mcqueen it, he's hyping up raymond to be this big bad boxer, but he's not as good as Andre. And he's trying to get him basically to fight Isaac Frost so that Isaac Frost can get a cheap win. Dre. Come on, man. You understand. It's like that. It's like that, Dre. It's like that. Gus retired from boxing. Isaac Frost became heavyweight champion. Baby brother was fulfilling his dream. And here, it's the same old business. Time to skin another head. Constantly try to headbutt you. This is a second skinhead now. This guy's a little tougher.
See how he fights? Hit him on the top of the head. Still going like a tank. Right now. I never forgot this part that's coming up here now. This shit isn't finished. What the hell are you talking about? I'm ready to fight right now. Get your boy ready. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He just had a fight. He ain't had time to rest. I don't fucking care, Ace. He's gonna fight me right now, or there's gonna be serious problems. Okay? Fuck it. Let's go. That's the skinhead boss. Oh, 
Oh, he went, he went below the belt. Cheap. When you're in the prison part of the game, they will fight so cheap that's not allowed in regular boxing, but this is bare knuckles. Look at the amount of blood that he's gushing from his face. Look at what I did to it. I'm trying to headbutt me again. And it work not go well for you. over. His face, look, it's gushing in blood. He's, okay, yeah, he's, he's covering himself now. One more good left hook in the face and he's done. Still going. Yeah, so that was satisfying, knocking all three skinheads out. I served my full sentence. I lost my youth. I lost my career. I lost my dream. Now what? Baby brother got me a job as an assistant trainer. So I guess we'll wrap it up here. So a few years has passed and Andre has served his prison sentence and he's going to try to come back to boxing. The story gets much better later on, guys. I think you guys are going to love it. I hope you guys like me knocking out those three scumbags. Um, you know, I just destroyed his face absolutely at the end. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, do drop a like and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.